Hello my mighty baboon, I hope you are all doing well and we are back in our Grim Dawn walkthrough. Today it's going to be very simple, we just want to finish the first act of the game and kill Warden Creek. To do that, we will first need to go deep into the Warden's cellar, then into the laboratory. Along the way, we will try to find a shrine and an exalted stash, and let's get started. We are going to go north, pop pop pop, wrong way, let's start again. We are going to go east, and then north. In the Warden Cellar, we are going to mainly meet Ethereals, and that's going to be the same thing in the laboratory. In addition to that, Warden Creek is mainly going to do Ether damage, so that would be a good idea to adjust your equipment and optimize to get more Ether resistance before you come in there. Around here, I'm looking for a long corridor that goes southeast. That's the one here. And now we are going to go north and find the door to the next area. We do not need to stay too long time here. There is not a lot of point of interest at this level. Let's level up and we put one point into Decay and Ravenous Earth. And we nicely stroll around, planting Ravenous Earth into the ground and smelting enemies. What more do we need? This is a life. Let's move on to the next floor. And we arrive into the underground transit. Let's first unlock the rift gate. And then it's blocked that way. So let's have a look further down west. And here we have an open door. And we should quickly arrive into the abandoned storeroom. Here we are, and there are two things I want to show you there. First, there is a breakable wall around here, with usually nothing useful behind, but uh, I just wanted to show you that. But then, if we go this way, There is another breakable wall here. And another one there. And there is a chance that the exalted stash is going to be here. And here it is, we are lucky. Let's see what we get. We get the gut wrench eviscerator, a two-handed bleeding weapon. We are not going to use it, it has no synergies with our build. And let's be on our way. As a lot of exalted stashes in this game, this one can spawn in three different locations. And this is the first place where we could find the stash in this area. Don't worry if it's not here in your playthrough, I'm also going to show where are the two other potential spawn locations. So now we are back on the main road. If we turn south, we would go back from where we came from. But instead, let's go east and we find our next shrine. To unlock this, we just need to use one ether crystal. And now that I have finished the bad constellation, we need to choose our next constellation. We have a lot of good choices. As a reminder, I want at some point to unlock Ratosh. So we will need more Chaos, Eldritch and other points. So we could just unlock a Chaos based constellation such as the Jackal or the Vulture. But we also want the Dying God constellation and we need a lot of primordial affinity for this one. So what I'm going to do is unlock the primordial star in the crossroad constellation and I am going to walk toward the sailor's guide. 
I like this constellation because we can get 5 primordial affinity out of 4 devotion points, and we also get movement speed, something we terribly lack at the beginning of the game, and along the way we also can get some resistance, and that is always nice. Alright, in this big room there are a lot of ether crystals, perfect time to refill our crystal stock. Oh, and we get this spy status with the ethereals. So with the enemy's factions, uh, we have the same kind of mechanism with the friendly factions. As we kill more and more of these ethereals, we become despised and then hated and finally nemesis status with them. And as we progress through the rank of an hostile faction, we are going to gradually meet more and more boss and heroes of that faction, until we ultimately meet their nemesis. Nemesis are unique boss that are part of the most challenging enemies of the game. I got to tell you that as we play hardcore, we will probably never going to meet them before we die. But let's see if your French Raboon gets lucky. You never know. Let's continue our way north. And while I was blabbering about factions, we got the Mistwalker leggings. A good epic equipment that's going to give us some elemental resistance and ether resistance. But we will need to wait level 20 before we can equip that item. And now we arrive in another room full of ether crystals. Same with the first room, I am going to destroy them all to farm the crystals. And we meet Beholden. He's reflective, so the more we inflict damage, the more we are going to get damage back. But that should be fine. You are probably wondering why I did not grab that green belt. Well, given its name, it did not seem to be a good one, and I am just too lazy to check it out. Let's continue to smelt our enemies, and let's take our time to farm crystal. We have all the time in the world. If we continue east, we unlock the last rift gate of the area, the hidden laboratory rift gate. And if we march north, we are directly going to find two new entries to the journal of the Inquisitor Creed. This guy is leaving a trail of notes like Hansel and Gretel. And don't worry, we are going to meet that guy at some point. Let's go on. In this area, as I said, that's going to be similar to the previous one. We are mainly going to meet Ethereal again. And at the end, we will find the lair of the Warden Creek. And we are going to kill that bastard. We take the Kithran's note. We are going to meet Kithran not long time after. Be careful about this liquid on the ground. It's going to deal a ton of damage if you stay in it. Let's climb the stair. And here we have another note. And the last Githran note is going to be here. Now, there is a chance that Githran is here. Nope, he's not here. So we go north. In this area, it's not always easy to find our way. And we level up. Let's first go find Githrend. And here he is. Hello, sir. Goodbye, sir. And now we can level up in peace. And you know what? I am going to fully level up Ravenous Earth. Because at Ravenous Earth level 16, we get one more blob of acid when we cast this spell. And that, my friend, is going to make your baboon very happy. Let's get out of the living quarter, and now I am trying to find a way to show you where are the two other potential spawns of the exalted chest we opened earlier. They are in a hidden area, really easy to miss. And to go there, we need to climb the stair here. Then go down here, and finally it's hard to see but there is a hidden passage in this room. That leads us to the ominous lair. And in here, we will mainly find spiders. And there is a chance the exalted stash spawns exactly where we are right now. Or in the passage that is just left. So now you know. There is nothing interesting here for us, as we have already opened that chest. So let's go back out to the inner laboratory. We are going to run north. Let's deal with Bolvaris, a hero that deals cold damage. Not a problem for us. And upstairs, we are entering the underground jail. 
and here we find the Zan brand's note. Now the room we are entering is going to be the last one before Warden Creek. We are also going to meet Zanbran here, and because it could be a little tricky to fight him while all these crystals are popping up Aetherials, I am first going to destroy them. So here is, let's go the other way, I want to destroy the crystals first. He's not too hard, he's just you need to be careful to not be overwhelmed by Aetherials. Alright, so now behind this door, we are going to find Warden Krieg. We should not have too much difficulties dealing with him, but he does do a lot of ether damage. So to make our baboon life easier, I am going to teleport back to Devil's Crossing, check what equipments we have and put components on them. So what about this breastplate? Yeah, it's marginally better, let's take it. We have this bassinet that is much better than the cap we currently have, that's a no-brainer. We cannot equip these boots, this hat is not very good. And we need to be level 20 to equip the Mistwalker leggings. While we are here, let's go see Darlet to get back the polished emerald from the cap. Let's take a look, shall we? And let's sell all the useless equipment that we have. Alright, so now I want to add components to our equipment. Okay, and I just see that we have an ancient armor plate. That's very good, as it will give us more armor and especially more armor absorption. We start the game with 70% absorption, and what that means is that 70% of the damage is absorbed by our armor, and 30% always go through it. That means that if you have 100 armor and one enemy deals you 100 damage, you will still take 30 damage. You do not feel it so much when fighting boss, but think about it, all the small enemies around us probably deal less damage than our armor, but they all have 30% of the damage that goes through for each of them. So it is going to be critical to raise our absorption to close to 100%, to basically be immune to all the small enemies around us. And there is a very good component that we can craft early game, and that's going to be the scaled hide. We just need a bristly fur, a resilient plating, and some crystals. And that component is going to give us a 20% absorption increase. That is huge. And now you might understand why we are farming crystal. So I'm going to put it in our shoulder pads. And now not only we have raised our armor to 156, but we also have 90% absorption. Very nice. Unfortunately, I do not have good components for our gauntlets. And I also do not have corpse dust to put in our amulet and ring. So I am going to instead put rolling blood to increase our offensive ability a little. And let's also put an emerald into our helmet. Alright, I think we are ready, let's go deal with Warden Creek. First of all, let's wait here to spawn some mobs. I want to kill them first. And let's get him. So, this guy has a lot of melee ether attacks. He has some arc attack. An AoE attack. He also has this kind of ether waves. I just need to continue to cast Ravenous Hearth and dance around him. And we got him. Or did we? That's right my friends, it's a two-stage boss. The Warden goes back from the dead, completely mutated. And in this stage is in my view much harder. He now has more skills, such as this stomp or these spikes. So generally we want to keep some space with him and avoid these spells, especially the spikes as they deal a lot of damage over time. And he is dead, for good this time. And with that we have finished the first act of the game. Let's see what we got. Warden's judgment, useless for us, nope, also useless and we do not use shields. Unlucky. There's also an exalted stash here, the storm colors pale blade, not for us, and we will check the rest later. Let's now go back to Devil's Crossing to get our sweet reward.
Let's talk to Captain Bourbon. Is it finished? Is the warden dead? The warden's defeat is a great victory for us, nay, for all of humankind. But there are many more ethereals out there, some much more powerful than Krieg. Perhaps more disturbing, though, there are those of our own kind who would see us dead to take what little we have, or just for the pleasure of killing. Among the innocent who passed through this prison on their way to Krieg's lab were many violent criminals, murderers, and worse. Many of them escaped to the northwest after the grim dawns, forming into ruthless gangs who prey upon drifters still traveling the roads. Since a river separates us and them, they have not been a problem thus far. Except we need farmers to get back to the business of growing food before we all starve to death. The farmland that supplied this region is to the northwest, and we need to secure a hold there. Ornay recently returned from Old Arcovia to the northwest and can give you details on the outlaw situation and what needs to be done. I realize that you have been through much in recent days, but we cannot rest just yet. So you must be the kid that's causing a stir in my absence. You've done good by dispatching Krieg. I knew that man in life. I dread to think of what he had become as an ethereal. Aye, that old mess has come back to finally bite us right in the ass. The river's kept them at bay for now, what with a broken bridge. It seems the bastards have garnered a taste for the one hole in the world they were once so eager to escape. I'm not going to beat around the bush. We're at war, and if we don't take the fight to them, they will surely bring it to us. I'd much rather fight on my own terms, wouldn't you? Before we do anything, we'll need to get that bridge repaired. Got men ready to do the work and some scrap to get you started. Just need to provide the remaining raw materials. Once that's all finished, I need you to enter the Arcovian foothills and show those bastards we're not a prize for the taking. Last I saw of them, they were mobilizing for something big across the river. Why don't you head on over there and introduce yourself? I set out with another scout, Elsa, to Roconwater, the lands of the northwest shortly after we had secured Devil's Crossing. What we found was a wasted overrun with predatory beasts, blood-hungry psychopaths, and refugees living in constant terror on the run. Our mission together ended when a vicious band of outlaws surprised us in the night. I thought I could protect her from anything, but when it came to it, I was felled by a bullet to the ribs before the fighting even broke out. Elsa fought like a devil, taking down two of the outlaws before they knocked her out. They took her with them and just let me here to die. I collapsed in despair and thought it was the end of me. I awoke some time later in what remained a little fishing village on the coast. A band of rovers had found me and treated my wounds. As soon as I could stand, I grabbed the dinghy rowboat and made my way back to Devil's Crossing. I'll be damned if I'm going to abandon Elsa to torture or worse. The Grim Dawn took my wife. Elsa is like a daughter to me, and I'm not going to let it take her too. Where I see it, Devil's Crossing needs the situation resolved as soon as possible. Alright, as you may have understand, the second act of the game is going to be filled with outlaws, and we are going to deal with that in the next episode. Thank you to all my friends that bear me for 15 minutes into this video. I really appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe and add a like to support the channel. And next episode, we are going to do what Money asked us and go to the Arkovian foothills. See ya!